Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday morning to you. Welcome back to Morning Musings. My name is Don K. Preston. I am the president of Preterist Research Institute of Ardmore, Oklahoma. I do appreciate you being with me. Hope you had a fantastic weekend. I tell you, here in southern Oklahoma, we had two of the most beautiful days you could possibly imagine. The sun was out. Uh, my wife and I got out in the sunshine. We actually did some yard work, which I don't particularly enjoy uh, by itself. But it was good to get out with the wife in the in the sunshine and enjoy the. <laughs> like I said, my goodness gracious, it was beautiful. Uh, you know, we weren't close to anyone uh, except ourselves, and we've been pretty close, <laughs> closely confined in our house now for over a month. So anyway. It was an absolutely fantastic time, uh, wonderfully, wonderfully enjoyable just to enjoy the sunshine. Well, um, we are looking at Jesus' emphatic statement in Matthew chapter 24 and verse 34. Verily I say unto you, this generation will by no means pass away until all of these things are fulfilled. Now, it's so ironic, okay, and it's so revealing. One of the uh, arguments, if you want to call it that, one of the arguments that is commonly leveled at covenant eschatology, those of us who accept the Lord's fulfillment of His promises in AD 70, it, it is often claimed you guys just redefine terms all the time, you just make up definitions. You change the vocabulary of the Bible. Well, then we come to Matthew chapter 24, verse 34. And oh, by the way, that accusation is blatantly false. But anyway, they make it because they can't defeat us any other way. So they just make stuff up, literally. Uh, well, I won't get off on that soapbox. <laughs> so anyway, we come to Matthew chapter 24. And verse 34. Now, what do all of the lexicons, virtually every lexicon that's ever been printed, say that the term, this generation, what do they say it means? Well, Thayer says, well, it might mean this in this passage, but the passages that he adduces don't support what he says. But nonetheless, virtually all lexicons say, that the term, this generation, with this specific demonstrative, you know, word that is used there, means all the people living at a given time. Well, the opponents of covenant eschatology have a problem. Because, you see, if they take, if they allow this generation to refer to all of the people living at a given given time just like it's used in the rest of the Bible, the New Testament particularly, uh, that means that the coming of the Lord, the judgment and the resurrection was fulfilled in the first century. So lo and behold, what do they do? They start telling us, well, you know, uh, this generation refers to, quote, this kind of people, a, 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 an evil kind of people. Well, that's not how it's used in the rest of the New, Te New Testament. And oh, by the way, that's not the context of Matthew 24, 34, where in Matthew 24, 34, is Jesus pointing the finger at a given kind of people and saying, this kind of people will not pass until all of these things come to pass. Uh, it's not there. And so we're told, well, Ganea means baby Mackey. And thus Jesus was supposedly saying, well, producing babies, having babies, will not pass away until all of these things are fulfilled. <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
Well, once again, <clears throat> you have to import that definition into the text. Where in the context of Matthew chapter 24 has Jesus said one word about baby making? And no, it's not in the word ganea. Someone wrote to me just the other day on Facebook, and they pointed out that in, in an Aramaic trans, translation, that it uses the word tribe. <coughs> and so <coughs> that means that Jesus was saying, this tribe will not pass until all of these things come to pass. Okay, which tribe, and by the way, it's not plural, so he's not saying these tribes will not pass away until all of these come to pass. So which specific tribe is he talking about? And then, <clears throat> and by the way, the word for tribe in the New Testament, the Greek that is most commonly used and translated as tribe is the Greek word phuli, used some 31 times in the New Testament. <clears throat> the most natural, the most natural word for Jesus to have used, if he's talking about the tribes, would be fully. And by the way, all the tribes of the earth shall mourn. Verse 30, fully. So that would mean, this argument, if he's talking about tribe, it would mean that he goes from the plural to the singular. And by the way, One definition that has been offered, now I must say this, those who have offered this translation down through the years, which is more of a, uh, which is more of an interpretation than it is a, a definition, pardon me, or a translation, translation, is <clears throat> this people. <clears throat> In other words, Jesus was saying, Israel, Israel will not, will not pass until all of the, these things are fulfilled. Well, here's a problem for that view. If you make this generation refer to the nation of Israel, and by the way, Ganea does not, it, it does not mean nation. It just doesn't. Ethno is the word for nation. But if we take the, the translation or the definition of this generation as this people, meaning the Jewish nation, then that means since Jesus said, this nation will not pass until all of these things are fulfilled, that means that the Jewish nation would pass away when all of those things were fulfilled. Do the dispensationalists accept that definition? Well, of course not, because you can't have the nation of Israel passing away at the second coming, which verse 29 to 31 is supposedly talking about in the dispensational paradigm. So what's the point? Instead of accepting the standard, the normal, the natural, the well-attested, definition of this generation. Look, folks, if you're going to define generation as baby making, as nations, or this kind of people, then we come to Matthew chapter 1, in which Matthew says, well, there were 14 generations from here to there, 14 generations from here to there, and all there were 42 generations. Uh-oh, does that mean there were 42 different kinds of people? Does that mean that there were 42 different tribes of Israel? Does that mean that there were 42 different periods of baby making? Does it mean that there were 42 different tribes? Do you see how silly it becomes? And so, when we look at the attempts to avoid the natural, the well-attested 
meaning of this generation. As all the people living at a given time, which once again, virtually all lexicons attest, who is it that actually seeks to redefine that term? It's not the preterist. It's those who know that if they allow the definition of this generation to stand in its normal, natural, well-attested definition, then futurism is dead. Pure and simple. What, what, what's that saying they've got that was so popular for a time? Mic drop. Game over. Game, set, match. So consider that the next time someone says, oh, preterists are always redefining the words in the Bible. Preterists are always redefining the terms in the Bible. No, no, no. Who is it? Who is it that actually sets out to redefine the biblical words, terms, and phrases? It is, in fact, the futurist. And we've got more on what Jesus had to say about when the Olivet Discourse was to be fulfilled, i.e., quote, this generation, unquote, on the flip side. So I'll see you there.